In this video, I will be painting my largest miniature ever. Hi everybody, my name is Nate and you are watching WASD20, a channel about tabletop RPGs and fantasy maps. This video is sponsored by Redgrass Games, makers of premium quality miniature painting tools, most of which I have been using for about a year now. I can attest to their quality, their brushes, their wet palette, their paint handles. You're going to see me using all this stuff in the video and talking more about it, but check them out. I'll put some links down in the video description. I'm also going to put a link down there to the miniature I'm painting for this video. It's not so miniature. It's the Artisan Guild Depth Dragon, which I 3D printed last summer. It is available for purchase on MyMiniFactory.com, which has tons and tons of great stuff for sale. And they even have a really cool crowdfunding campaign right now where you can get some free STLs. So I'll put a link to that down in the video description as well. And now to the painting. So what you're not seeing here is I did base coat this miniature several months back, but uh, I'm gonna be redoing the base coat. You can see I've got the torso put together and I've got some green stuff in the seams to fill those. And uh, I got a purple and gray, but I'm gonna go with a darker purple because uh, I wanted to be able to kind of bring it up to a lighter purple. And I'm gonna go with a bit more of a dirty brownish gray as well. I got a cheap airbrush a few months back and uh, it's been serving me pretty well just for base coating. It really saves a lot of time. So uh, on a big miniature like this, it really comes in handy. And I haven't really done too much else other than some base coating and some other minor stuff with it. But uh, you can see I'm base coating the dark purple first and uh, doing the torso and the arms. And then I'm going back with my gray and kind of making that, again, more of that brownish gray with the airbrush for the base coat there. Next, I'm gonna do a little dry brushing on both the purple and the gray. For the purple, I'm just using now straight up royal purple and um, just dry brushing so that I can kind of pull out a little more texture. It's a great miniature for dry brushing because it is so heavily textured. And uh, let's take advantage of that by just kind of dragging our brush around and picking up those raised edges to brighten up the purple a bit. Now for the dry brushing on the limbs, I actually broke out the brand new Red Grass Games dry brush. Uh, first time I've used it and uh, yeah, I was really impressed. It worked really well. A little too small for the gigantic torso of the dragon here, but perfect for these limbs. And I look forward to getting a lot of good use out of this brush. For dry brushing phase two, I would use an even brighter purple. We're just kind of continue to bring it up to brighter and brighter purples. So for this one, I am using Hexed Lichen, which is a really nice one. And I'm gonna be dry brushing in the same fashion, a little bit lighter this time than I did on the first dry brush. Now, as I'm dry brushing the limbs here, you'll notice I'm using these Red Grass Games paint handles. And man, I absolutely love these things. They are very comfortable to hold. Uh, they have a really nice weight to them, which is really important for stability. They even have magnets you can stick to the bottom. And uh, they have these tops that rotate really nicely. It's just a, kind of a flick of your thumb or your finger, and you can switch out tops between different handles. So yeah, definitely check these things out. Now, I could absolutely keep the dry brushing going, but I was getting kind of tired of it and I wanted to do some layering. So I'm taking my hexed lichen and my number two brush and I'm getting some layering highlights here to, to really kind of take things up a notch here. Now, this size two brush from Redgrass Games is the workhorse of all my painting. Like, I use this brush for 90% of what I paint for the last year or so now. Uh, it's handmade in Germany from uh, Kalinsky hair, so it's a really high quality brush and it's held up really well for me. Definitely recommend checking these out. I decided before I got too much further on the purple, I should address the gray kind of underside of the dragon here. 
And uh, for this, I'm going to be first applying a wash to my grayish tan um, using a sepia wash mixed with a little bit of Nuln Oil, which is a black wash from Citadel, and uh, applying that to the underside here. And that's really gonna darken things and kind of make the details pop and uh, kind of dirty it up a bit too, which I like. Now for the dry brushing on the underside here, I am using that original gray to kind of bring it back to that tone while still retaining the, the kind of grungy shadows from the shade. Uh, and then I'm doing a second dry brush and adding a little bit of bone white to brighten it even further. For the base, I first airbrushed on some pretty standard gray paint, and then I dry brushed on a couple stages of lighter gray. And then for the little crystals here, I decided to go with a lime green. And uh, yeah, I liked the way that turned out. Then I gave it a black wash all over the base and a blue wash on these crystals. As we get back to the purple here, I'm gonna be mixing in some Vallejo model color purple with my hexed lichen and slowly kind of transitioning more and more to that brighter purple. Uh, now you notice I do have the dragon assembled at this time too, and that may have been a mistake to assemble it so soon because the claws were really hard to paint once I had it assembled. I should have probably done those first, but oh well. So one of the keys with these layering highlights is you really have to make sure your paint is quite thin. You're going for semi-transparent layers, just slowly building it up. And uh, you can see I'm just kind of picking the edges here, the, the highest corners of each scale. And um, yeah, just trying to get a little bit of a gradual build up to brighter and brighter purples. However, because this model has such jagged scales, I wasn't trying to be too smooth with my transitions. My transitions could be a little bit abrupt. Also, a huge thank you to Redgrass Games for this amazing wet palette, the everlasting wet palette. Uh, it's really nice. It's a lot better than the cheapo wet palette I got on Amazon. Uh, my paint stays a lot wet longer. It makes it really easy to blend my purples as you see me doing here and it is very mold resistant, unlike the other one that I had. Depending on the area, I probably did about uh, two to four layers of these highlights and uh, eventually getting to just the straight Vallejo model color purple. For the dragon's claws and later the teeth, I decided to go with English Uniform from Vallejo Model Color line. Uh, I really like this for teeth and for talons and things like that as a base coat, a starting point, and then you can build up to getting a little bit more white from there. Uh, for that, for me, I was gradually adding little bits of bone white until uh, at the very highest highlights, I got just straight bone white on kind of the tips of each claw. For the mouth and tongue, I coated everything in flat red first and found that it was way too bright. So I went back over it with my game color gory red and that was a lot better. It's just a darker red. Uh, however, uh, in hindsight, even this probably is just a little too red and I kind of wonder if maybe I should have gone with a pink or even a purplish, like a grayish purple perhaps. Uh, might look better and maybe I'll go back to it and fix that at some point. Uh, but after doing the gory red, I did give it a red wash as well with my Citadel wash. And uh, yeah, we were looking pretty good at that point. Uh, other than that, just added a couple highlights later to bring back a little bit more pop to it. For the teeth here, we're doing the exact same thing we did on the claws. We're starting with English Uniform as a base coat. After a coat or two of that, 
we're slowly adding some bone white until we get to the very tips of the teeth and we are at straight bone white. Overall, you'll notice this gives the teeth and the claws a very dirty, grungy look, which I think fits really well with such a savage creature as a depth dragon. Here are those tongue and mouth highlights I was talking about earlier. Uh, just going back with a little bit more gory red. And now we are finally getting to the eyes. Now, I got this Citadel contrast paint from the store a while back called Tesseract Glow, and I wanted to try it out. But for a contrast paint to work, you're usually supposed to paint the surface white first, and then you put your paint over that, and some of that white will see through. So that's what I did here. I put some white on, and then I added my Tesseract Glow, and wow, was it bright. It is like neon. So for me, I thought this is a little too bright. I'm really glad I have this paint. I'm gonna find some great uses for it. But in this case, I toned it down by adding a bit of Coelia green shade. I did two coats of that to really tone it back down. Then I highlighted with a little bit of lime green just to bring a little bit of the highlight back. And lastly, I painted in some black stripes to give it a cat-like appearance, or maybe a serpent-like appearance might be a better way to say it. This is the only time on this project I use the size 2-0 brush. Again, for almost everything, I use my size 2, uh, but for uh, that little detail of the stripe in the eye, I used that tiny brush from Redgrass Games, and it worked really well for that. As I kind of took a step back and looked at my work here, the only thing I thought was missing was a little something for those crystals on the base. They just needed a little bit of an edge highlight. So after I added that, I was done. As we look at the finished product here, I wanna take a moment to thank the WASD20 patrons. These people are amazing. They're making it happen for me here on the channel. I couldn't do what I do without them. And they get some pretty cool rewards. Things like weekly live map drawing streams with me or access to campaign diaries for my D&D games. Check it all out for yourself over at patreon.com slash WASD20. Thanks, patrons. Thanks as well to Redgrass Games. Make sure you check out their products in the video description. And thank you all for watching this video. I would love to hear what you think. If you have any feedback for me, always looking to improve. Just leave those down in the comments below. All right, take care, everybody. You'll see me again very soon.